two countries as always, but we're really just going to look at the home economy today. We're going to have these two uh, sectors, like I said, agriculture and manufacturing. Manufacturing uses labor and capital, agriculture uses labor and land. Today, we're going to have the usual assumption of diminishing returns. So that if you add more workers to a particular industry, each worker you know, can produce some addition, you know, additional units of output, but their marginal product is going to decline as you hire more and more workers. These are the you know, wage formulas. Right? The wage equals the value of the marginal product of labor. So the wage of manufacturing is the price of manufacturing good times the marginal product of labor. Same thing for agriculture. And since workers can move, as long as you're producing both goods, then the wage has to be the same across sectors. If we draw this relationship between the wage and the number of workers, that we have in manufacturing, we have a decreasing function. Why? Because of the diminishing returns, which is today answer for everything. And uh, why is that? Well, because by diminishing returns, the marginal product of labor is declining as you hire more workers in manufacturing. So if you want to increase the wage of manufacturing workers, what can you do? You can do two things. Three. What can you do if you want to pay a higher wage to manufacturing workers? You can fire somebody, right? And uh, those that remain are going to be more productive. Absolutely. That was one of the options I had in mind. Option number two, perhaps <laughs> better for society. What could it be? In this model, you can increase the marginal product of labor by hiring more machines. If I want to make you more productive, I'm going to give you a better computer. More computers, bigger computers. What is the last way to increase the wage? Increase the price. So if you want to pay higher wages, either you fire somebody, either you make everybody that works for you more productive by giving them more machines, more managers, or more uh, education, or you find ways of increase the price of your good. But now, here I'm drawing the two curves, the two labor demand curves in manufacturing and agriculture. The equilibrium is where the wage is the same in both sectors, and the number of workers working in manufacturing. Right? At the intersection of the wage and the, uh, the demand curve for the people on Zoom. In both sectors, well, the sum of workers working in agriculture, the sum of workers working in manufacturing is, is equal to the total number of workers in the economy. Right? So the wage is the same everywhere, and all workers are employed. It's a little messy to do in these two graphs. The way to achieve that is to do the following. First, you draw the labor demand for manufacturing. So you say from zero here, going to the right, you're increasing the number of workers in manufacturing. There is a limit to the number of workers that you can increase. And the limit is L bar, the total number of workers that you have in the economy. And you're gonna say that the length of your X axis is exactly equal to L bar. So the maximum you could go to is this point here, to hire manufacturing workers. And then, you draw another vertical axis and you say, well, going from this point here to the bottom right, to the left, you're increasing the number of workers in agriculture. And so you draw a, a, a specular, the mirror image of the labor demand curve that we saw before in this right panel here. And there you have it. When these two curves intersect, they have the same wage. And if you trace down that point to the x-axis, you know that every point from this LM in red to the left, zero are workers in manufacturing. And all the workers in agriculture are those that are remaining. Okay, suppose that the price of manufacturing increases because of trade. 
what's going to happen? Well, this curve is going to move up for every number of workers, so holding constant the marginal product of labor, if the price of manufacturing increases, each worker gets a higher wage. So what we're going to have is an upward shift of this labor demand curve in the manufacturing sector. What happens when the wage in manufacturing increases? If you, my friend, work in agriculture, what are you going to do? Switch to manufacturing. As you switch to manufacturing, what happens to the marginal product of labor in manufacturing? Decreases. So, see that you're here. And uh, so for people on Zoom, uh, this would be the point in which our L intersect the, uh, the red curve. Right? So if you are supposedly at that point, basically agricultural workers are going to move towards manufacturing. And by doing that, because of diminishing marginal returns, the marginal product of labor declines. So their wage will decline. And so we move along this red curve, this red uh, labor demand curve in manufacturing. As more and more workers move away from agriculture, towards manufacturing, people working in manufacturing is expanding, right? And the people working in agriculture is contracting. As, people, as workers move from, away from manufacturing towards agriculture, the marginal product of labor declines. And it keeps on, this movement keeps on happening until the wages in the two sectors are equal again. An increase in the price of manufacturing increases the wage. So whether you're in agriculture or manufacturing, it doesn't matter, your wage went up. The wage matter in the sense that you can buy some stuff. So whether you're better off or not, assuming that we all agree that consuming more is good, depends on whether the wage went up more or less than the prices of goods. The wage goes from W to W prime. What happens to the price of agriculture? Does not change. Right? So your wage went up, price of agriculture is the same, your real wage, the number of units of the agricultural good, is now higher. You can buy more quinoa than before. Okay? So that's good. What about the manufacturing good? Can you buy more of the manufacturing good? No, you can't. Because the price of manufacturing increases more than the increase in the wage. Why is that? So follow me, look at the graph for a second. The change in the wage is WW prime. This segment is the change in the wage. But we said that the change in the price is equal to the vertical shift of the labor demand in manufacturing. So it's the distance between the blue labor demand curve and the red labor demand curve in manufacturing. And this distance is higher than the change in the wage. And so if you're a worker, you're going to be able to consume only less of manufacturing good. So let's go, let's go back to you, my friend. If you're a worker, are you better off? This is an ambiguous effect. We do not know whether workers are better off or not without any more knowledge. What, what, would you, what would you like to know? to figure out whether a worker is better off or not. So here, the effect of trade on, on workers is ambiguous. And it depends on what workers consume. If workers consume a little bit more manufacturing good, then they're better off. Sorry, then they're worse off. If workers consume relatively more agricultural good, then they are better off. <laughs> 